Yikashen Institute of Health Science was uh, founded in 2007 as a multidisciplinary translational research institute. It is based in the Prince of Wales Hospital, which is a teaching hospital of the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And the Center for Novostics is a center opened under the Indo-HK scheme, supported by the Hong Kong government, and we're based in the Hong Kong Science Park. So we are focused on the new applications of circulating nuclear acid diagnostic tool. Our program in non-invasive prenatal testing, or NIPT for short, started with our original discovery back in 1997 that during pregnancy, a fetus would release its DNA into the bloodstream of a mother. And then by actually taking blood from mother, you are able to actually deduce the genetic makeup of the baby. Our team thought, was there any way to improve on the then state-of-the-art of prenatal screening, procedures such as amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling. But these are procedures that most parents would like to avoid. We resorted to the analysis of cell-free fetal DNA in maternal blood. But initially, it was a challenge because cell-free fetal DNA, it only amounts to about 10% of all the DNA in the maternal circulation, with the remainder coming from the mother herself. The DNA is not of high quality, they're highly degraded. For a decade or so, our staff, our students, our team, we painstakingly spend hours and hours trying to work out how to make use of this scanty material of poor quality to assemble high quality information of the fetal genome or the underlying fetal DNA. By the late 2000s, we have different generation of the cell-free DNA tests that produced pretty high accuracy for the detection of fetal chromosomal aneuploidies such as Down syndrome. From that program, we have uh, uh, created the first non-invasive prenatal test for trisomy 21, which has now been used all over the world in dozens of countries uh, by millions of pregnant women every year. And actually, we then also see the parallel of that to cancer because basically if you can work out the chromosome makeup of a baby, you can also work out chromosome makeup of a cancer. And then by using that technology, then you can basically detect multiple types of cancer just from a single blood test. When a patient has cancer, the cancer DNA would be released into the blood so that we can detect the cancer DNA. We screened over 20,000 subjects and used nasopharyngeal cancer as a model. We use real-time PCR to detect the cancer-associated changes, namely the absent virus DNA in the blood of these subjects. Using that technology, we identified 34 cases with cancer. Without screening, around 80% of the subjects would present with stage 3 or stage 4 nasopharyngeal cancer. But for our cohort, 80% of them had early stage cancer, namely stage 1 and stage 2 cancer. This pharyngeal cancer is just a model to demonstrate a, an important biological phenomenon. That is, when a tumor is very small and the patient is asymptomatic, then the small tumor would release sufficient amount of DNA into the circulation to allow us to detect it early. Biomedical Computer Center has been established for more than 10 years. We are closely working together with a variety of clinicians, actively leading the advance of nascent research in biological property of cell free DNA, such as its phrenotomics and mesolomics, which can be used for non-invasive prenatal testing and cancer detection. Our team has made recent effort to incorporate artificial intelligence to our research. We take advantage of convolutional neural network, which is traditionally used for image processing, to directly detect DNA methylation based on the third generation sequencing, that is single molecule real-time sequencing. My role as a clinician scientist is to bridge the gap between bench and bedside. To me, it is most rewarding and motivating to see the translation of our research into clinical practice that improves patient care. Our team is interested in the fragmentomics of cell-free DNA, where we look into the DNA fragment size, end motifs, single-stranded jack ends, genomic locations of fragment ends, as well as the link between nuclease biology and the fragmentation of cell-free DNA. 
One of the team's latest research revealed a population of long cell-free DNA molecules in the maternal plasma that could be analyzed by a single molecule sequencer. We developed an approach which leveraged the abundance of CPG sites on such long DNA molecule to deduce the tissue of origin of individual molecules. We believe that this work opens up potential clinical utilities of long cell-free DNA analysis in maternal plasma detection or monitoring of complications of pregnancy, such as preeclampsia. We are developing new technologies to actually look at the circulating DNA in blood to actually find which organ it's come from. And by leveraging on some of the latest sequencing technology, we can actually directly analyze those epigenetic signatures. So this will potentially expand the use of circulating DNA into various other diseases to things like detecting stroke, heart attack and other diseases.